Welcome to the technical overview of my motion control rig, Dave. I will be going over the parts and components and how things work. So if this video is not for you, I recommend watching the brief overview video I made which goes over the rig in less detail. I also have a showreel of the projects that the rig has been used in so far, so please give that a watch and you can see it in action there. This is going to be the last uh, instalment of the showcase series for my motion control rig. Uh, so if you like it, please subscribe. Um, I do plan on making more animation content and more motion control content in the future, including uh, um, me getting the focus pillar working as I'm having technical difficulties with that and I'd like to sort of document the process of uh, getting that to work. So without further ado, let's jump in and look over the rig in a lot more detail. As we've covered some of the basics with the slider, we're going to jump straight in and talk about the motors. On the rig, I use three NEMA 23 stepper motors for the pan, tilt and track movements, and a NEMA 17 for the focus. The reason I went for this motor setup was because I didn't know what the best options were, and I had bought the NEMA 17 first because it was cheaper, and it gave me a motor to test on, so if I somehow blew it up, it wouldn't set me back too much. The NEMA 23s can handle uh, 2.3 newton meters of torque, whereas the NEMA 17 can take 1.7 newton meters, I believe. Upon talking to people and using the rig, I've found that there are better motors to go for. However, this is the first rig I've made, and there will be things that will be rough since I'm still learning. The lead screw is an Acme threaded bar with some copper grease to help it travel better. This used to be a bit of 10mm threaded bar, which I found out very quickly that it wasn't fit for purpose and replaced it with this, which is what I currently have, which works so much better. The base of the slider is made out of MDF, which was done because it was cheap and we had access to a lot of it. However, on the whole it is quite heavy, um, like the rest of the rig, which is an issue when it comes to it being mounted anywhere or transporting it. I feel the track motor sometimes struggles with moving the rig as a result, but I plan on fixing these issues going forward. This is probably where the video will be most technical, the electronics of the rig. In this box we have a power supply running 48 volts direct current to the motor drivers and the brain of the rig, an Arduino board. The Arduino I'm using is an Arduino Uno Mark III. It allows me to have up to four camera axes and allows the computer to move the motors. It has a code on it which is provided by Dragonframe, so you can still build a rig with a basic knowledge of Arduinos and coding, just like me. If you want more than four axes, then you can get an Arduino Mega, which I believe allows up to eight. Next are the motor drivers. There are many different ways you can have motor drivers. Some people use uh, Arduino CNC shields. Uh, the Dragonframe coding doesn't work with these, so I've gone for a different setup. I originally used four Big Easy drivers. However, these didn't seem to work for me, as I blew a couple up by accident. I decided to go for four DM542T motor drivers. These could take the voltage and the current that I needed for the motors. I have also learned that there are cheaper drivers I could have gone for, and I wish I'd known about them as these things are expensive. However, they work, which is good, and you can limit how much current the motors draw, and choose what micro-stepping settings you want for each motor, which helps you get a smoother movement when the camera slows down and speeds up. The focus motor has to have the current limited more, as it is a different motor and has different specs to the others. Uh, these all run on 48 volts, and that is from this power supply. I used a Stepper Online power supply, so all of the motor equipment is from the same company, so I knew it would work together. It works on mains power, and I've used some lighting wire to connect it to the motor drivers. The signal wires from the Arduino need upgrading, however, which I will do in future, as I am still using breadboard jumper cables, which are not ideal. Also in the box, we have a 12 volt fan connected to a buck converter, which keeps the drivers cool. In the top, there is some vents that will let heat out. Um, this is because my biggest worry is the box catching fire and burning down wherever it is. However, it has been used for extended periods of time with no issues at all. 
so hopefully this won't happen. The cables to the motors are in a nice non-stick cable sleeving. This replaced the original spiral banding I had on there, um, which is still on the track motor at the moment, as I had problems with the cables catching and pulling on the motors whilst it was moving, which caused moves to fail and look horrendous. So that's all of the components that I've used in the motion control rig. Now it's on to the fun questions that uh, I would assume most people would ask about projects like this. So first one to go for would be, what would I do differently if I got to build it again? Well, I would 100% condense everything down as Dave is quite bulky and quite heavy. Uh, I do my best to integrate all of the electronics into the slider so it is all one unit and I would use smaller motors as well as going for more affordable pool parts definitely. I'd definitely use some extruded aluminium because of how light and modular it can be and I would love to buy a commercial rig just so I can see what other builders are doing and how and to compare it to how my rig works. Another question would be how much did the project cost in total? Um, this would be quite hard to calculate as a lot of the parts that I used and the materials I used I was able to get for free. So the MDF and the aluminium angle that I have used to sort of make the rig itself uh, I got from free as they were just scrap they would have been they would have ended up in a bin and they're just such good materials it would have been a waste to throw them away. Um, if I remember correctly the rails and the bearings came to about 60 quid. I couldn't tell you how much the um, lead screw cost. Um, the off the, I believe at the time the motor drivers were around £30 each, which is very dear, but they were all bought at different times, so prices do vary on electronics. I could not remember how much the motors were, but this sounds very expensive, however, this is not as expensive as just buying a rig. This is surprisingly, it's a lot cheaper to make these than it is to buy these, um, and I definitely would recommend you trying it if you're aspiring to get into this sort of thing it has been stressful it has been great fun working on this project and i uh, definitely love more people to get interested in this as this is a very niche area of animation that most people tend to gloss over um would i do it again 100 yes um if i could literally get paid to build these rigs and to you know continue my passion i would 100 do that so that's pretty much about everything. That's the technical breakdown of the rig. I've done my best to cover everything and to not repeat what I've said in the previous video. If I've missed anything, feel free to reach out to me uh, with a comment or uh, with a message and I'd love to, I'd love to talk about my work. Um, please subscribe if you like my content and turn on notifications so you know when I add a new video. Um, stay safe and I hope you all have a good day.